Now, please, please, let me advise you. As a young man, as a young woman, grow large in your spirit. Grow very large. Give yourself to fasting. Give yourself to prayer now. So the first principle of life is the principle of denying self. Second principle of life is the principle of praying without ceasing. That was a kind of system that the apostles put in place. They continued steadfastly. This was their culture. This was their orientation. In the apostles' doctrine, in breaking of bread, in fellowship, and in prayers. They continued steadfastly. So it means that they prayed without ceasing. They can do 40 days fasting. And after 40 days fasting, you think they will rest. No. Next Tuesday, they are back in the prayer meeting. That is the culture of our ancestors. But today, somebody told me, Ah, this person is able to gather 22,000 and he's not praying. The way you, you people claim that you pray. <laughs> we don't know what is happening there, but that's not church. He found a way. I've been to Etihad Stadium in Manchester. People gathered. In fact, the stadium was full and people were still outside looking for how to enter. And Jesus was not in the center of that gathering. If those 22,000 people are gathering and it's somewhere in Lagos and they are actually gathering and part of what they do is not praying without ceasing. There is something responsible for the reason why the people gathered. Because don't think you can set up a system that is contrary to the pattern that the apostles established. And it is the same initiative you are trying to pioneer. Are you still with me? So the second principle is praying without ceasing. If the spiritual leadership you are bringing to the people that have your ear doesn't require that the people will practice praying without ceasing. <coughs> Prayer is a big molecule in your initiative. If it's not a big molecule, you are running, uh, you know, it's a customer care affair. And it's, it's, it's a good thing. At least it will help relieve stress. It has its own... It has its own... <laughs> Use it's an NGO, all right. It's okay, no problem. But don't call it church, don't call it church because the people that started church under Jesus' supervision they gave us a pattern. If what you are doing is contrary to that, point, forget about it. God is not you are not one of the people God is considering for Him to do anything in the earth. You are doing something, you are busy, you need employment, no problem. But if, if we're talking about the move of God, we're talking about what God wants to do now. Please, let it be known to you that that platform you raise without prayer is not one of the platforms that God is considering to pass through to come into the territory. So we have first law is denying self. Second law is praying without sin. Third law is bearing the cross. Bearing the cross. I, I, I know the issue of bearing the cross is not... If we... <laughs> what does it mean to bear the cross? I hope you know that is the requirement of discipleship. Jesus made us understand the things that you will need to be ready to do if you want to be his disciple. Is anyone that wants to follow him must deny himself. Must take up his cross and follow him daily. So bearing the cross is a daily activity. <clears throat> it's a daily activity. Now, imagine, Jesus is going to Golgotha, and he has a cross on his shoulder. Maybe he was negotiating for one lace, one good lace, previously. And then, 
They now put the cross on him. And then they lay cell and say, The lease has come with the lease. Because of what is bearing, he cannot desire that lease. Because the meaning of what is bearing him it signifies that he's going to the place of slaughter. If you are truly bearing the cross, there are some things you will not have time for. There are some fights you will not have time for. There are some distractions you will not have time for. So, oh, there's this lady you have been pursuing. And then, they now give you cross to carry. You've been proposing to her, she, she has not accepted. And then while you were carrying the cross, you now say, I've accepted, I've accepted. That acceptance doesn't mean anything to, to you anymore because It's just like a woman that is about to give birth and then you bring, she's in labor, you now bring later and say, <laughs> she can't even see, she's in another world between life and death. In that state that she's between life and death, she knows what really matters, it's not late. But we are <laughs> running with so many things that don't matter and that's a proof. That you dropped your cross long time ago. That's the proof that you dropped it. You left it. The moment you leave your cross, you begin to look for fame, you begin to look for your ambition begins to matter. But if you are bearing your cross, the only thing that matters to you is doing the will of God. And every other baggage becomes insignificant to you because that cross you are bearing is supposed to be for your protection so that you will not be contaminated by this age. No matter how the, the, the things of this age are made to attract, that attraction does not affect you because... I am dead and my life is hid in Christ and Christ in God. That's my reality. The only life that I live now, I live by the faith of the Son of God. We went to a nation. This nation that we went to I don't know how to. We're online now, Abby. Are we online? Okay. So I can't say that because we're online. I don't trust. You no, know, that person. They've, they've used that to trap me before. They say they are, they are post, they are post. And then it, it generated a battle that I fought for two years. As you begin to preach the gospel, at some point, some honor will begin to come to you. And then, people that are in authority in different lands might begin to seek your audience. That's the most treacherous part of ministry. Because I've seen people before, politicians before, when they want to find out the will of God, if am I going to win this election? They are very humble. Then maybe they you tell them, okay, you are going to win. They now campaign and win. They now see you as someone that is in their service. You know, at the time he came, he came to you. You were do, holding one meeting in the city, so he came for the meeting so that he can. And then when he now gets into power, he's expecting you to come and meet him. That's what me I cannot do. I will not meet you. 
I don't need you. I was doing well before you showed up. It is you that need me. And if that is clear, you will find me where I am. And if you don't have the humility to do it, we have no business together. It's very easy for you to change your principle when you are dealing with people that other people respect. But if you know your calling and the one that called you, you know that no human being can promote you. You will know how to deal with power accurately if you are still bearing your cross. The day you lose that cross, you are a sellout. Even the people that you are pastoring, the people that you are a shepherd over, you will sell them out because you don't have any restraint. Number four. Number four principle is honoring the Lordship of Christ. Now, those of us that uh, experience some revivals when you were on campus, I began to experience God, and maybe you are pastoring a church now. And the intensity of the revival you experience on campus is not in your church. There's one ailment that what you are doing carries. The way you honor the Lordship of Jesus in that revival is not the way you are honoring him in your local assembly. As long as the Lord has first place, That means you can't move. You can't take any decision except you know his mind clearly. His spirit will be strong on your life. Now, please, please, let me advise you. As a young man, as a young woman, grow large in your spirit. Grow very large. Give yourself to fasting. Give yourself to prayer now.